Hello everybody, so today we have BMW X3 F-Series and like the video says, what we're going to be doing is coding out the automatic stop-start function. Um, no doubt you already know what it is, it's not the stop-start button that we're going to code out, it's the stop-start function here because as with many people, this is actually my own car and the automatic stop start really annoys me because so many times i want to pull up at a junction and just uh, pop it into neutral for a few seconds and the stop start cuts in the start motor clatters what i'm saving in fuel is negligible it's probably costing me more in starter motors than it is in fuel and we often get asked to code these out now a couple of systems like the carly system which just um doesn't switch the stop start off it doesn't delete it out of the system it just turns it into the default being in the off position which means you've always got this orange light on which again is not ideal so i'm going to show you how to code this out completely out of the system using the think car max that diagnostic tool there the workshop favorite first i'm going to go for a little test drive and show you it how it is when it's working and how annoying it is okay so this is standard test drive um, if you're wondering how i'm recording i'm not holding a camera up i'm uh, wearing uh, recording glasses so to activate the stop start function you have to drive above i think five miles an hour in first gear and press the brake once at least or else it uh go on where you go or else it um won't activate so what i'm gonna do is just pull up here and we're gonna activate the start stop briefly by pulling foot up on the clutch and as you can see the engine stops and foot on the clutch and away it goes again so as you can see the start stop is currently activated and we're gonna code it out in just a second so just to show you again how annoying it is if you just want to knock it into neutral just for a split second oh it, it started again because i turned the steering wheel so uh find a safe place to pull over and stop So if we want to just stop here for just a second and let's say we just want to stop just for a second and then start again start stop all the time really frustrating there proof that I wasn't holding my camera recording glasses brilliant so this is the fantastic think car max um, if you look if you're interested in buying one of these details in the description below uh, we sell them in our on our uh, online shop so to start coding, we're going to put the ignition on. Although it doesn't really need it, but highly recommended is um, always having it on charge. So we've got our power supply unit all hooked up. So we've got options of scan, high speed, smart scan, system scan. We're going to just show you how quickly this can scan all the modules on this car with a high speed scan. So click the high speed scan and you can see it goes through in real time the whole car is scanned. I don't know any car which will scan as quick as that or any tool which will scan this car as quick as that. This code here is an old existing one. Um, this is my own personal car, so um, I'm not really worried about that sensor because uh, it's been there for ages. I'll live with it. So what we need to do uh, to do this properly so we don't always have the warning light on, we go into coding and programming. Now I'll give you a quick guide. If you want to know where something is you can go into personalization read all the warning messages tells you what it's got now if you look up here function help maximum set if you want to know where to code something it tells you which modules different items are of what you're going to be coding 
Now we know that we're going to be coding the start stop, so we're going to have to code the engine control module because that's got start stop function in it. Um, do we need to do anything in the instrument cluster? It doesn't look like it, but we'll find the actual main start stop function is in the CAS unit. Uh, if you look in here, somewhere in here, auto start stop function state, auto start stop. So after we've set the vehicle order or the fa there's all different names for it we then have to code these units to correspond with what we've set in the vehicle order so the first thing is vehicle order then we do coding so now we know where we've got to look we're going to go into retrofit next Right, we're going to change the vehicle order. Switch the ignition off for 10 seconds. That's 10 elephants. Ignition back on. And OK. Please confirm it's ready. Well, as always, we've got our power supply unit on. And we're going to go OK. Now this is the backup coding of the vehicle order, or the, or the backup of the vehicle order, the coding, whatever you want to call it. Record that. So we're going to go OK. If you want to know what is available, if you click on the Available button, and it will tell you what you can add in. But first, what we're going to do, actually, we're going to go back and we're going to find in here the one that we're interested in. These are all uh, different things that you can code in and out of the car. Um, so when you do retrofitting, look in here. This is where you'll find the vehicle order. This is what you'll have to add and remove from. Now, we know the simple job for today is to remove automatic start-stop function, this one here. So if we want to remove it, it's 1cc. So just make sure you back up everything 1cc. And like I say, available in here. We can look and see what is available. This is a big long list, so 1cc. If we look in here, this is just a guide. Uh, it tells you all the, all the ones which are uh, one something something. These are all the different uh, things that you can add in and remove. Now, if we get to the bottom, I think it goes to 199. We haven't seen it yet, so we go next page, because uh, this is in hexadecimal. So it's not even hexadecimal, actually. It's alphanumerical. So. Um, 1cc where we find it there it tells us automatic start stop function is 1cc so we all, we can always find things if we need to go back to it in in that little uh, information box there so we'll come out of uh, that that was just to show you what you need to do in other circumstances automatic start stop function do you want to delete it yes we want to delete 1cc as you can see it's now gone so we click next. Now, if you look carefully in here, you'll see that the old coding had 1cc. The new coding doesn't have 1cc. So we're happy that, yes, we're going to remove it. So we're going to OK that. Uh, this function will change the settings. Yes, it's scary. We'll go on to it. Confirm it's ready. Yes, we've got our power supply unit on. Yes, everything is good. So we're now doing it. So the vehicle order has now been changed. If you read there, you may also need to recode what you change. This is where people go wrong. They change the vehicle order and it doesn't work, and they think that's it. So what we now have to do is go back, and now we have to go into coding. And if you remember, the modules that we needed to code, we've already checked, and we've seen that that's in the CAS unit, the engine control. It's important that when you change the vehicle order, you always do the coding to suit afterwards, and then it'll all work. And don't forget, back up everything that you do on every step of the way. So we're going to code the CAS. Encoding takes a long time. It really doesn't. Whether manually select the integration level, we're going to say yes. Read the messages, and that's the integration level that we're going to do. So it's now coding the CAS. CAS has now been coded, so we go OK. The 
Um, other one was the engine control module. So we find the engine control module. We go, yes. Again, manually select it for what we're doing. Now coding the engine control module. That's been completed. So we'll go back. And let's see if that's worked. Okay, back on test drive. Um, I've just gone and uh, filled up with some fuel because I was getting a low fuel message. And now the car is nice and thoroughly warm. And we're gonna stop in the same place as we did earlier. And we're just gonna briefly stop and put off the clutch. Carries on running and we don't have the orange light on. So, let me give it another couple of tries. And we're gonna make sure that that's definitely not activating the start-stop anymore. So now we come up to a roundabout, whereas before it would be really annoying because if you had to wait just for a split second and the foot is off the clutch, it now carries on running and it doesn't have the clatter of the starter motor um, every time. I mean, you can press the start stop button every time you get in the car to deactivate it, but it's a pain it really is having to keep doing it um every time you forget you come up to a junction and it's like oh here we go again anyway um let's get back to the workshop do a code scan show okay. you there's no code okay back in the shop so ignition on um just to let you know you don't need to recode the cluster you can start this up and you can see we've got no error messages if you do code the cluster you'll get an error message come up on the screen here. Um, it'll just warn you that the cluster needs a factory update. It doesn't, you just clear the message, it goes away, doesn't come back again. As you can see, information here, vehicle status, uh, check control, uh, okay, no faults. So, all good. So, last thing to do is a final scan, high-speed scan, There we go, no fault codes. Only this one in here, which uh, I've had for a while. I'm gonna look into that and see what, what there's a sensor for the um, junction box. I don't know what that is. Um, car doesn't cause me any problems. So there we have it. Think Car Max, really good tool for coding and programming the BMW cars. If you're interested in buying one, link in the description, link to our shop. You'll see the, the range that we sell. Highly recommended tools, we use them all the time. If you like the video, click the like, share, subscribe, do what you like with it, and I'll see you on the next video.